Good morning, Bright, and good morning to you. Wow, it really is spring. Bella here. Um, just a third in the series of fluidity, power, and release. Some reminders of the techniques that we did last Sunday. Um, I won't be dancing, but I'll just be showing the things that we did in between dancing. Um, we added on one uh, subtle core stability thing. So um, remember, we had already worked with um, finding that deep psoas on the exhale, letting it snug up to our spine, and then gently just picking up one foot and then the other, maybe there's a ball under here. Or the idea of lifting the hips, exhaling, finding that deep core psoas, and thinking about picking up one foot and then the other, keeping the hips really level. Those are so subtle, but this is how we tune in and this is how we really find that. And so on Sunday, um, we worked with something much more boot campy that you might enjoy. Um, you can really build some deep core stability just working with uh, moving between these two shapes. The first shape is all about the inhale. So you plant your hands and you keep your hips really high and you just allow yourself to fall into what we call extended puppy pose. That's all about length and the inhale. And when you're ready to exhale, you travel forward and you get the weight over your hands. So the shoulders come over the hands. And now at the end of the exhale, my psoas is completely snugged up to my spine. You don't want to be here. And you also don't want to be all tough. It's a neutral spine, so sometimes it helps to really play with it and maybe even have somebody sight you. So the movement itself can look like this, inhaling back and exhaling forward. Inhaling back, length, exhaling forward for stability. Now, if this starts to be doable and you can really maintain a good plank pose, you can add letting the arms bend and coming back up again, but that can be a trouble. Um, we can lose it and we can get in big trouble with the shoulders. Sometimes you can even take it into a full plank to downward facing dog. Same idea, right? So, you know, you can use the tempo of your own breath. You can even do two breaths to the back, two breaths forward, but, um, this will really ignite power here deep in the belly and have you feel like you really did a workout. Uh, you could do 50 of those, easy. Well, maybe not easy. You could build to 50 of those. Okay, the rest of what we learned on Sunday was all about release. We reviewed, of course, how to, the fluidity that we can get from the rollers, but um, there was a big focus on what to do with these amazing little double wrap tennis balls. Um, and we really did a long ritual uh, feeling into all of the chakras as we did that. My intent today is just to show you a technique with the tennis balls. So remember, you can always use them to release deep in the shins on both the inside and the outside, all the way to the ankle, both legs. And um, we traveled in both directions, from the bottom to the top, and then the top to the bottom. So I'll just show both of those. Um, you can use the tennis balls this way. I call that parallel because it's parallel to the spine. Place the bottom ball on the tailbone and the top ball on the top of the sacrum and then just swing those hips back and forth. Oh yeah, that can be so good. You can lift a leg. You can spend a long time here at first chakra. Then you can turn the balls perpendicular, put them in the waist, second chakra, and just fool around with, there's two or three places you could put them at the waist, and just wiggle your hips and move your knees a little bit, and just explore, see what you find. Then you can move them up right where the rib cage begins, diaphragm, solar plexus, right, third chakra. It's up to you how much the hips descend because this is very tender here, but you might just keep the hips lifted and roll back and forth a little bit and mobilize that particular region. And then you can just 
Sit yourself up, get the balls perpendicular, and go for Anahata, heart chakra. So right in between the shoulder blades, there's another place you can hold your head with your hands and um, just roll back and forth between those shoulder blades. And you can let the balls come into Vasudha, the fifth chakra, and just rest in the curve of your neck, hands maybe on your throat, and just very gently, this very tender, gentle region, just mobilizing in there and feeling in. Then you can scoop the balls into the suboccipital area, right where the skull meets the um, neck. And of course, this is Anya Chakra, the third eye point, because you can follow this line all the way around to the brow point. You can mobilize right in there. And while you're at it, you can give yourself a nice little head massage and get into that crown chakra. So that's kind of a way of working from the bottom up, paying attention to the different levels in the spine. But realistically, what most people do with these balls is they plant them right down perpendicular. They lay down just south of the big hump in the neck. Um, if you put your head on the floor and your chin is way up, you might even put a pillow under your head or you might keep your head lifted like this. It, you start working your way down, right? You can do all kinds of things with your arms and just slowly I'm pushing into my feet and the balls are going lower and lower down my spine. So realistically, this is what most people do as a regular practice. You can do it very quickly. You can pause in any particular spot you are getting in really deep to the facet joints and loosening things up. There I am at that um, diaphragm solar plexus level, and now I'm into, get, starting to get into the waist. I might let my knees start moving instead of the arms at that transition point, traveling all the way down, finally ending up at the sacrum, which feels so good. We did it. Um, parallel, but now we're doing it perpendicular, you can have the balls right in there and just uh, dig away. So, mm, that's a great morning practice. Thanks for joining me here. Um, and uh, release away, loves. <laughs>